Good evening. Happy New Year. It's 7 o'clock, 7, 6.30. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for, for general information is Carol Parker. Carolyn Parker. We have the um, it's an existing Phillips 66, 110 Russell Street. And the owner is rebranding it to a mobile gas station. So there's a um, few things that I guess they started doing it and found out we needed to come here. So they had bagged the existing freestanding sign, but they've taken that bag off. So they did go in and change out dispensers and stuff like that. So the mobile dispensers are in. So if we want to just go page by page, um, basically we're just going to maintain the uh, freestanding sign, um, take the Phillips 66 off and put two new faces on that say mobile. They would like to take the manual prices down and put up a new sign that has LED pricing. It would be eight inch high digits due to the width of the sign that's as big as we can get. With any LED sign, um, you know, it dims as it gets darker at night. It can, you know, it can be set to a certain brightness if that's an issue um, with anybody. Um, then the next page, just shows the gas station that there's four dispensers and um, that stuff I'll talk about in a minute. Um, the next thing we have is we're going to go in and reskin the canopy. So the canopy will be blue and we'll put two new mobile um, signs up on the canopy in place of the existing Philip 66 signs. Now these are all externally illuminated? The LED, unless we're told we'll otherwise. Only, well, you only show that the uh, pricing pipe pod is digital. Right, but this sign, this mobile sign is LED. So just the letters light up, the background is opaque. It lights up now? The Phillips 66, I, I don't know that. If it doesn't light up now, then it's not permitted to light up in the future. All right, but if it lights up, I can light it up. Yeah. Okay, so I'll find that out when I drive home. Um, and then uh, mobile has this new new thing that they have um, what they call their new gas. It's called Synergy, and it's seven components to give you better gas mileage. And I have shown, given you a sample of um, a site, what, what a site currently looks like. And we're looking to install um, this is not this location, but it's another location that we've done the synergy at. So this this is um, this would be called a blade. This is called a koala, and then we have number wedges. So instead of the the number for the what pump you're at being on the the dispenser, they now have them coming off the columns, which is easier for the people when they're going in the store saying I'm at pump eight or whatever. That's an awful lot of times. I don't know if they're all there today. What's there today? Um, none of those signs are there today. That's extra. Okay. You're permitted one roadside sign. Yeah. Up to what is it? Six four more. building signs, and you'd be considered building signs. It would get total sixty-four square feet. Okay, so there's one so sign on the building, and then we'd want two on the canopy. No yeah. signs on canopies are allowed. They currently they have, have two now. signs on the canopy. They show there's still the 66 signs now on here. But it would be considered a wall sign if that's a structure. Oh. Well. They're, they're all, you got one, one road sign. Right. And up to four building signs inside, whether it be canopy, building, whatever you want to call right. it. As long as the total is less than 64 square feet. question, how many square feet of sign do they have now, sign that do they have now, and how much you're proposing? I, I don't know that. I don't know. So the only thing I don't know is what the size of the wall sign is. But the two proposed canopy signs, I believe they're 13 square feet. That would be 26. So we'd be under the 64. And that would be three signs. So on the synergy components at the dispensing area, if I don't have text on it, can I put them up? Say that again, though. If there's no text on the blades, can I install them? What is it going to be? What is going to be on there? I mean, Nothing. 
which is going to be red. The numbers are going to be on there, right? Well, the numbers are... The pump numbers are fine. The pump numbers are fine because that's, that's yeah. directional. Yeah. I mean, the, you're asking for a lot of stuff. And I don't know if we have a problem with it or not because simply sitting here and saying, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do this, I'll be honest with you, we want to see what it's going to look like. That's why I gave you a sample. But now you're saying you're going to do something different. Well, no, I mean, the only difference I would do is I wouldn't have, this would have, this would just be red. So that word wouldn't be on it and then it wouldn't be considered a sign. Okay. We just want the gas stations to look alike. Um, so the red, is that the koala? You well, this this is a koala, the, the which on the koala they put the safety stuff like stop your engine, sh no smoking, and all that stuff. That's what goes on the koala. Okay. And it's called the koala because it wraps. Because it wraps vertically, and then, right. and then the blade sticks out horizontally. Right. I know you want them to look like, but maybe they shouldn't look like. I'm not saying that you're wrong, and the, and the village overlay just did. You know, I mean, I wish we paid more attention to. Dunkin' Donuts when it was changing from Mr. Donut to Dunkin' Donuts right. because if you go to Williamsburg, it certainly doesn't look, the Dunkin' Donuts there certainly doesn't look like the Dunkin' Donuts in Hadley. Right. And it's more attractive. Okay, so this yes. sign is 25 square feet. Three, 36. Right, but I, can I put a box around that? Because that's the only part that lights up. This is opaque. This is only 36 because the fascia is 36. Okay. So only the, it's going to be you know, like a halo. So only, see the white pot is going to glow. Like yeah, but what's, this, what's the dimension of that? I don't know. I would have to find that out. I would that's, just make that's, sure that's, that that's, it would, well, I would just make sure the yeah. three signs are under the 64. We, we want to make sure of it's under the 64 before we give you approval. Oh, okay. And that's our job. Okay. So, and then the building sign, so I wasn't, I didn't know what, I, this said it was like a planning zoning commission. Planning zoning. But that's not. Okay. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, Sorry. We have the jurisdiction over the part of the site plan approval, the way site plan approval, and, to, and go for the and, and change and design to be things consistent with signs. Sure. I don't think that one. Yeah. All right. So those are fine. You said it was a building sign too? There's currently a building sign on the building when I drove by. It says Food Mart. Okay. So I would have to find, I don't know the size of that. I'd okay. have to find that out. Okay. So I'm allowed to see What, what, what is the final statement of digital products? It doesn't. It, it does. Okay. What it does say is specialty signs, gas station pricing pods, which should not exceed 16 square feet. Uh, but uh, the only light emitting signs that are allowed are um, like basically an open sign in the window. So the so we're at 16 square feet for that existing price sign. But what we're doing is we're taking the three prices off and putting just one price. So they just will have regular prices. So light emitting signs. Well, th th this this so setup is fine. But they're going to change it change to LED light. Really. That's, oh, that's what she's requesting. Yes. That's and that's not, not allowed. That's not allowed. So a halo sign is allowed. Correct. Yes, that's, what the, that's what the canopy sign will be. A, um, the, these are and, and this this will just have to, this will be opaque, and that's the only thing that will light up at night. So it'll look like it's floating there. I mean, that's the only way we can make that. I mean, yeah. under the new rules yeah. and regulations, canopy no signs may be printed permitted on canopy. Yeah, but she's they've let them out. They know. Now, so you're saying this is going to be a backlit sign? Yes. That's so this this will be, be. This is opaque, and just the mobile will be lit. Backlit or illuminated? It'll be whatever you want it to be. Backlit? It'll be if you, if yeah. you can do backlit, that's much like preferable. Halo, right. Okay. okay. You think your backlit is well, it's actually kind of pretty. Yeah, no, it, it is. I will agree with you. So I can't have LED on my price line? We, we, we can make we, it. We, we don't know that yet. Okay. 
Because we can change it to like a. It certainly can't flash. No, it's not gonna. That would be. That would be smart pay cumbling funds. <laughs> Are you going to have one of those televisions that as soon as you uh, put your credit card in and starts advertising something? I don't, I don't know. I just filled up there really, and I didn't see anything really come on. Thing. So. And those can be shut off. They Sometimes they just come with a dispenser. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, if you know how, there's one of the buttons on the right hand side. I think it's the third one down. You, you can press mute the it. button, get used to noise. <laughs> I went over there one day and said, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. You know, I'm pushing the button. Ha, ah, that's it. It's the, the screen stayed lit. But I knew the third button on the right side down, oh, thanks for pressed it, and uh, <laughs> the thing muted. I said, well, that's cool. Either that or you just put everything on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's possible, too. Because we can't know one minute what's going on in the news. <clears throat> What's the board's preference on the digital pricing for the pod, price, pod pricing? I'd rather not go there because I think we're trying to be consistent. Okay. Uh, so you could go with the any form of the, that. You can any form of those. You what I'll right. say it to. You can leave yeah, the center. You leave They'll probably do that in one. Do I have to come back and show you that? Yes. Please. Okay. And just like you said, you should, you know, put it in writing with the other ones you're going to be. Yep. Um, and then I'll find out the square footage of that sign. Okay. I can Maybe I can go there and measure it now. So where were you pulling out that comment that there's no uh, signage on, a, uh, on the canopy? No signs may appear on canopies? Yeah. 17.6.6.1. Okay. Canopies do not appear as in... Yeah, I'm not sure internally that, lit signs. I'm not sure if that's the canopy that we're moving up. We're talking last time, those are the canopies we're talking about over windows. Yes, but, yes. I, but again, it, right. That was the, this canopy is probably last considered one, a building because it's a structure and it has Yeah, I see it. Yeah, um, yeah I think you know, this is pre existing, so. That was the one when we were trying to deal with those. And I'll find out if they're lit when I go Correct. by. Correct. Okay. okay. Awnings. Yeah, awnings. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Awnings. Are yeah, on these, on these, I think on these chill to be to talk about, but again, to Joe's point, it might mean big canopies like that too, but um, yeah, and no, just a just a red sign for the call to blade. Yep. Okay. Just red. So I can bring all that back. Yeah. We'll be here in two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. Every no first, place else I'd rather be. Every first and third week from Worcester. Well, not too bad. Nah. At least it's not snowing or anything. So it's a start at 10 o'clock. I'll be in bed. Oh, it is? <laughs> That's what my father told me. Uh, <laughs> Worcester. My <laughs> husband watches the news and the weather. I don't. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'll be back. Okay. Mr. Crowley. Take care. Gene Crowley, Hadley Corner Shopping Center. I am here because I have a new tenant uh, for the shopping center to replace the um, sweet frog. It is a uh, Asian Hawaiian uh, restaurant. Um, Sounds yummy. More of a fast casual concept, similar to Chipotle, and um, it uh, it is something I think that'll uh, be well received. Um, so I, I need the use approved uh, by you folks, please. And I also have a sign drawing for you to... Isn't, isn't this the second Asian restaurant that's come through as a change of... No, wasn't there no, another one there? it was a pizza. Yeah. Wasn't there? No, there was a quick uh, I thought oven. There were, I thought there was a Chinese restaurant that came through and you could go in and pick what you want and open a dish. Well, not in this property. Okay. I don't know if somewhere else in town is possible. I don't know. Oh. Okay. It's non-illuminated uh, uh, from the inside. It's externally illuminated only. It's less than 40 square feet, and it's uh, consistent with all the other signs in the center. It's a total of 39 square feet. I just noticed the sign company didn't add it to the math, but 
I just did it. It's 39 square feet. So I'll make a motion to approve change of use and to approve sign design. Second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, we need to get rid of it to get um, do you one of these things, do we, Bill? Uh, yeah. uh, it wouldn't hurt to. Is that for me? Uh, yeah, what did it do? <laughs> yeah, we have a, a new system we're trying to. I got the signature copy here. Okay. This means we're not the be-all, end-all. You should check with other. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know this, but just to be consistent, you're going to take one and you're going to sign one to acknowledge you received one. Okay. So since we're I can do that right now, we're technically waiving site plan approval by not making you go through site plan <laughs> approval. So this just tells you that waiver of site plan approval does not mean that you're free to go. You still have to talk to the building inspector, or the health, the fire department. Correct. This is a form I will fill out and give to the building inspector that simply says, because in the past I've been, we do this, and he doesn't hear about it, like, you know, what did you do? How do you know I know that? So you don't have to worry about this, just sign, page, we sign, give to the building inspector that we just did what we did, and it's been working pretty well. Okay. In the past, you've had me mail you something also. Do you uh, yeah, you want to email me that? Correct. Right. And when I did that, I would just send it to Tim at the same time. Yeah, that's so, fine. But that's what this is. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of takes yeah. care of that. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah, you very much. Thank you. So, Mr. Roberts. Well, I'm here on 220 Russell Street, Suite 200, and I, I don't think Mr. Dunn was here when we uh, talked about this project before, but I think everybody else was. So I talking about uh, this building right here, uh, which is um, my cross, Nawadic CrossFit is out in the front here, and there's a series of buildings. This is the wagging tails that you approved uh, a little while ago. So this building here, I had a tenant in there, which was Berkshire Children's and Family. So it had 7,500 square feet. They moved to West Springfield. Uh, to better serve their clientele in Springfield and Hoyo. So now I have 7,500 square feet to fill up there. And I have a uh, company called Aclary that came out of UMass. It's a brand new company. And the last two uh, pages of this is, this is just background on the company. But uh, the last two pages is really what we need to talk about. Uh, they need, they would like to take 1,355 square feet. So if you open the very last page, that is what it was with Berkshire Children's and Families. And when they downsized at one time, we, we split it up into various little tenancies. But, um, Clarity wants to take on the eight and a half by 11, you can see what they would like to take, uh, which is only 1,355 square feet over on the web. And the rest I'll work to rent to other, I'm actually working with another spinoff of UMass that wants the rest of the space. So it's, they want to do office, um, where it says tenant one, 480 square feet. That'll be their office. Um, this corridor, I would put a door at the north end so that it would all be contiguous. They want to do some testing in where it says 1B. And they want to do some proof of concept assembly in 1C. So, um, so what do you looking for for us to make? Area. Tim just thought I should, because we're in the aquifer and it's a different use than what we've been doing, okay. he just thought I should come talk with you folks. We're kind of like a research user, like a pilot, pilot plant, small pilot plant use yeah. in a way. Yeah, but they'll assemble, you can see their thing right here that they built. 
so they want to assemble a few of these till they prove it, and then they'll go off site and start building it big, you know. They even talked to me about if they can get the funding, build a separate building, you know. We, we have room still here to build over here. Yeah, the, only, the only problem with that is this building those would be considered industrial use. Pilot plant use is okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. manufacturing would yeah. be. Yeah, manufacturing, that's what we get with the industrial use. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's your problem with that. So and I told them uh, they still have an association with UMass. They were, uh, and if they're going to do any testing on hazard materials, I told them they could not do it here, down uh, by the sewage treatment plant, Amherst sewage treatment plant. They can do hazardous testing there in, with UMass. So I told them that's part of their lease that they can't do anything. Believe it or not, the other company that we're talking to also treats water. <laughs> yeah, it can be a big thing with yeah. all the need and all the various. They have the other issues. company has a pilot program set up at South Hadley uh, sewer to treat the effluent that comes out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this like a cross from where the dusty rows? Uh, this is that basically at the end of the senior housing out there, behind the uh, fitness center. Across from Sam's. Sam's, yeah. And right. then you got the storage. Right, right. Right there. Yeah, and then next to that was that 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 uh, ice cream shot at the dusty rows or whatever it came to have. Yeah, but it's right. across the street. Yeah, across, right. right. It's on the north side of the hustle street. Right. Boy, they they've got. Ambitious people on staff. I see it. Unbelievable. What's the address of this building? 220 Russell Street, Suite 200. Bain Capital, Wharton, Millitech. Somebody's been around a while, right? Millitech? Well, we met, we met. So I'll make a motion to. Uh, what was the previous use? Same thing. Uh, social services yeah. agency. Social services. In the same building, we have share coffee. So this building is divided into. Mark, this building is divided into. Currently, uh, yes, I bet. So the 7,500 yeah. square foot post so about, about here. About here. Share okay. Coffee is in here. Okay. And the Northwest our, uh, our, District our Attorney opinion. Drug Enforcement is in the back. Should I'll take it up before that. Okay. Are, you, you're, you're, are you starting at 7 or 710? 715. Okay. We have mixed use. So you got a motion bill again? So I'll make a motion to approve a change of use for a clarity for office space and assembly slash proof of concept. Um, open paren, not manufacturing, no hazardous material testing in aquifer, no exterior alterations. That's the motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is granted. Thank you. Okay, just a minute. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> uh, just to make sure with the system. This it just says that just because we're doing you approval doesn't mean it's carte blanche to go and do bypass health board of health and building inspector and all the rest of this stuff, which some people have actually thought that meant or say you thought it meant. You know better. Okay. Okay. Well, send you something, or is that sufficient? Or? If you have this in you can email it. PDF, yeah, 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 that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Staff is brother. <coughs> How are you? Good evening. This is for 103 Russell Street. Staff is for 44 Lawrence Plain Road. Um, 
wanted to propose, as you can see, this is 103 Russell Primo Pizza, and um, the flower boxes and the old woodwork in the front pretty much seen its day. And um, <laughs> I wanted to propose the before and after. I just wanted to go with a clean look. We're just going to throw up like a little picket fence there, um, some new balliards. There are some balliards that are um, in these posts existing, these, these posts right here, when I was doing some work. And I, I don't know if they're going to meet in ADA egress when I expose them. So we might have to put new ones in. I might be able to use them. They might be rotted out. We propose new ones just so you guys can see what it's going to look like. Um, and then we're just going to clean up uh, the overhang. You know, clean it up. We, we painted the whole exterior, put a new roof, new parking lot on it, and um, just want to clean up the front of it. Who owns it? Um, my wife and I do. The Primo's Pizzas? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Do you own the business or the building? The business. Okay. Yeah. Primo staying, I hope. Primo saying, yeah. Oh, yeah, Richard, Richard gave it to Michelle they, a couple years ago. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're, so you're uh, Michelle's husband. Yes. Now I got it. Yeah, I remember you. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. He's a landscape Right. Yeah. Is that tough? Yeah. We live here currently. We've moved here last year full time. Permanently? Yeah, so we've been living here full time now. What are you calling this? It's all non structural, it's all non bearing. Okay. Richard calls you. He can't say his acres. He says set. It's set. Yeah, he's got me set. Yeah. I'm just gonna call Primo Pizza Reposade. That's fine. Yeah. And we're gonna clean up um, the underhang. There's some lights underneath there. They're all bashed out and stuff. This is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so signs. You know, 103 Russell. No signs. That's all the store owners. We're okay. Just, there's a couple signs up there. You know, but we're not dealing with anything on the roof. So I'll make a motion to waive site plan approval for exterior alterations to the facade for the drawings. So, and so these posts are not structural? Oh, no, nothing. Yeah. Nothing yeah. bearing. Everything kind of leaves over inside. Yeah. Okay. And this is from a structural engineer that I do with. So that's, that's where the plan came from. Great. Second. Who second did it? You go. You. Okay. We got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any vote? Motion passes unanimously. Sorry to write that. Thank you. I'd like the others if we could just sign the bottom of that. I probably, probably won't do it until spring now with the weather, so. <coughs> you can. Copy day of seventh. Thank you very much. You want to take John now? Yeah. We can take the topic of the <coughs> variance for sign request that we just found out about. And uh, this is for uh, AJ sign for Orange. What do they, what do they want to? Larger signage. What does that mean? I'm not sure what they got in mind, uh, but uh, uh, it must exceed what. Uh, zoning bylaws permit because okay. they're coming for us. Because it's a multi-tenant building, so they're only allowed 40 square feet. Um, now, so did they come before you for site plan approval originally? No. Or was part of the... Of when when Manny was there, Manny came for site plan approval. But they have not come back to us for any changes or anything like that since they're doing what they're doing. So, so, so they have to come back to you for change of use? Well, the... Mall came back to us after Mandy's moved out and got permission to divide the structure to three retail spaces. So we don't need to do site plan approval again. Uh, that part is fine. But I think uh, we have sort of a standard condition. We want to see the signs and everything from the new tenants as they come in. And, uh, and that place is oversigned anyway. So. We'd be holding. We expect to hold the line at 40 square feet. For it. It's, it what as as Manny's, it supported a 60 square foot sign because it was a single tenant building. But now that it's a multi tenant building, it supports three 40 square foot signs, one for each tenant, one for each tenant space. And 
far as I know, they're the, <coughs> they're the only ones in there now, right? Yeah, but they're, they're dividing it more than one tenant of yeah, available. Yeah, so. I mean, <coughs> there's nobody else coming in there presently. Right. Um, and I think that it, it's just in the aquifer, I think. It just, we could double check that, but I think we did want to come, we wanted people to come in and see us. So, you know, as they identify tenants, just to know who, who was going to be there. But I, we don't, we do that informally, administratively. So it doesn't require another public hearing, but, um, but yeah, they got 40 square feet of sign. That's all they get. Yeah, we're, we're not, you know, we're not in favor. I mean, we can even make a motion that we're not, maybe we should do that. Yeah. <clears throat> what is it? Orange theory. Do we know what they do? It's a, 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 a it's fitness place. Fitness, yeah. Okay. Another one? No. no. Holy smoke, Hattie must be out of shape. <laughs> it's kind of a it's kind of a boutique one. It's very small. Not it's not as big as Planet Fitness. So it's like a more of a specialty kind of place. It's similar to F forty five, like session trainings an hour. So okay. it's not a twenty four seven type of gym. Uh, it's, it's a class. Gym, it's it it runs of, every hour. Like almost like personal training kind of thing. Yeah, in a in a group session kind of. So that's how uh, it's very similar to F forty five. Okay. Are we okay to come in? Yep. Our email said 710, so I just... Well, this is, this is, this is, this is a different, different, this is different, 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 Thank you. Um, I am yeah. Coogan? Ian Coogan, yep. Oh, Coogan. Okay. Oh, we're going to be invaded by the Air Force. Yeah. Hey, sorry, I just got done on board of the base and we just got done. So I am, sorry, I only have four of these. Sorry about that. That's all right. It's four. I'm the franchise owner for Sport Clips Haircuts. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys ever heard of Sport Clips. It's, uh, it's a um, um, haircutting chain that targets men and boys. Uh, it's a sports environment, so you, when you get your haircut, you feel like you got your own kind of place. We, we, we you know, we we're not a unisex. We mostly are for men and boys, and um, so we do haircuts, and we do this thing called an MVP, to the hot towel after the haircut with a uh, massage and a massage chair. So, it's, where is this? It's going to be on, it's in 355, it's in the WS development, um, right by, pretty close to LLB. It's between five guys. Oh, I, really? Yeah. I thought there was a group with another tenant in there. There was what? I, I thought that there was only going to be three tenants, five guys, 101. No. And yeah, there's two. two there's us and then somebody else. I'm not sure who else they've, it looks like it's open okay. right now. I mean, so. Yeah, they, they were. There was, they were. They, was, they, they were benched from the beginning. Yeah, okay. We were. Yeah, we were from the beginning. We, yeah. We've been trying to open up like for the last four years. How many chairs are you gonna have in there? Uh, eight chairs. Eight. Yeah. What's the one price of a haircut? You want a little bit of TV, so it's a little bit of good yeah. advertising. Yeah. Nineteen dollars for a haircut. Okay. Senior uh, senior varsity is sixteen dollars. So. Okay. They're pretty cool. I'm doing a lot. There's the yeah. Um, there's eighteen hundred across the country. We're in every state, and it's the leading men's hair, uh, men's and boys uh, haircutting place franchise out there. So we came today for the sign. Um, the sign's gonna be um, halo lit, forty square feet. Um, the top part is gonna be halo lit. The white haircuts part will be unlit at night. So only part that will be lit during the evening is the the next page shows that the part that's so cut it here is one of a, a, kind of a heavily regulated uh, location in Massachusetts. Isn't it? Don't you have to go through a lot of training? Yeah, I I, I won't be in the store. I just I do the business part of it. So I, we have a manager that runs that has a license that runs the that runs day to day. They'll be there every day or not every day, but you know they'll be there running the, the um, operation. And then I get my life scale license through the state, um, you know, the cosmetology license through the state and uh, the manager is on the license and they're, they're the ones that uh, um, will run the, the daily haircutting. And this will be, the sign will be on 
hours of operation? When will it be off? Um, I, I I think ten o'clock was they said was the, was the latest could be. I thought I believe I'm, I I can't remember that. Well, I mean, we'll I'll see whatever time the landlord said and make sure okay. it's yeah, on and off. Yeah, ten o'clock is that only time. Yeah, I think it was ten o'clock. It'll be on. It'll be on mostly on at times of darkness. Won't be. We really won't need it during the day, so it'll only be at times of darkness, basically. So. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the signage per the tear sheet, uh, uh, not to be illuminated after 10 p.m. Okay. Second. A motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Just to let you know, parking is a little tight it right is. out in front yes, of it. It is. This is part of a bigger complex of the mall. Yeah. So you may have to ask your employees to park just a little bit away from. Yeah, that was more <coughs> surprised how tight the parking was when they when they uh, yeah, yeah I built it out. I've had so, that here. Yeah. several comments by people, yeah. and they said you could just. I thought you would. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to we'll have to do something about that because they said that if they try everybody tries to park right in front of our store it would just be it would be detrimental to us because it looks like we're a lot more crowded than we really are and people yeah. sign out to mm -hmm. come so yeah here's a copy of what you just signed okay great well, we've already started working the building permit for our build out so we talked to right so that's, that's basically too. what that does it yeah. just tells you to talk to the yeah. um talk to the building department and everyone else because we're not the last word. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thanks. And you guys can all come get free haircut first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see fifty dollar gift. So, yeah. um, Captain? Yeah. Sure. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't know that we had to go through the permit, but the sign person said they're better to show you guys. Uh, we did get the permit for Hadley Dental Care a while back when we were planning to open, so the sign which is outside on the road is, we went through that and we have the sign already. Uh, but we have in the building Mill Valley Commons facing towards the road. Our space has 11 windows altogether and six of them fall in the patient operatory side, so we were trying to cover that. So uh, I got somebody <coughs> to give us an estimate for perforated, like a graphic kind of thing. So this is what we initially proposed. Now, I'm not sure if this falls under the signage, but these are perforated vinyls that give a one-way view. So person from the outside on daytime cannot see inside to protect patient privacy. I think I set this around. This there. Is right. Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, uh, I am not too much concerned if we have to make the Hadley Dental Care part smaller or just put on one window. We have a sign outside uh, and these images are taken by me because I do photography. So I was trying to, if I was paying for the vinyl, I asked him, can we put some graphics? He's like, it's the same price whether you put graphics or not. But then he was like, well, might as well go through the so permit part of it. Yeah. So you're gonna put a you want to put a dental drill in the window? In a in a little artistic. <laughs> I saw that. I'll tell you what. I turn it. We could make it more beautifying than that. Ever uh, seen Marathon Man? No. Check it out. I will. Check well. it out. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. I was wondering about that when I went by it shortly, like maybe a week or two ago. I looked in the window and I says. It's nice to sit in your chair and look out the window, but to have the people driving down Route 9 and looking at you, yeah, it, it's like, that's kind well, of strange. I, I wanted to put blinds, but all the patients that came in, they're like, please don't cover it with blinds. We like the view. So, like, you like it from inside out, but not the other way around. Yeah. So uh, the sign person from Springfield has like, can we do something one-sided, like a tent or something? Is like, we could do something like this, so people from yeah. outside cannot see, but your patients can see outside. So... I did talk with the sign person, and um, let me see. Here's my copy of the bylaw. Oh, yeah, I got it right Okay. Um, Gene, it? Gene Nixon. Um, yes. Sign around. And it does appear that this does fall under the definition of the sign, which is fairly broad, but it's. Um, 
Um, uh, it's uh, well. The, question is whether in the nature of an advertisement, announcement, or direction, or is designed to attract the eye. Um, and uh, yeah, I did an email with, in fact, it's part of the email that chain that came back to you. Um, but on the other hand, we did approve that uh, mural. landscaping mural. Yeah, yeah, the landscaping mural well, this, is totally, this, totally this is unrelated little, to This is a little different. If you refer to 7.6.7.1 signs behind a windmill facing uh, not to exceed six square feet provided it's not illuminated past 10 o'clock yeah, or uh, no more than two such signs will be allowed. But well, those are light emitting signs. But it's in the wind. Yeah, but those are just those are specifically for light emitting signs. I think we had no, another. No, this is on the specialty signs. Canopies, gas station, light, blah, blah, and light emitting signs. Yeah, 7.6.7 .7 is light emitting signs. But there was something else about uh, uh, well, you're into a size question about more, no sign more than 40 square feet. So if this is a sign, would appear to trigger surface area as well. Um, um, Will this be in replacing the window or behind the window? Behind the window. It's just like a decal. So it's almost it's like a, kind, it's of, a, kind of like you can put anything you want, you want in your window. I mean, that's initially the sign person said that, well, this doesn't apply. But I was like, well, if I'm spending some money, I want to make sure that it's legally yeah, right. Sure. I don't want to like put something and then have you take it out. So. Well, no, they, we do have some limits on what, what can go in. Okay. Um, the, um, I'm just trying to, um, the idea is we don't want the clutter. We don't, and there were, this doesn't have a safety issue, but you think of something like uh, Four Seasons, where they have their windows completely obscured with advertising yeah. and backed up with uh, shelving, so you can't drive by and see what's going on in there, which you might want to do. Um, so I guess the, the question is, if to the extent that you are putting your, your logo there, that's I mean, what makes it a sign, really. If I'm, we have logos on two of the windows that he proposed, and I actually was opposed to putting the logo at all. And he was like, you know, if, if somebody's looking at it, you might want to put one logo in there. Like, let, let just the picture be kind of an art over there. I don't, we already have a sign outside. So if I have to just put one logo as compared to two on the windows, then I'm, I'm really okay with that. Do you have any other building signs? Uh, the one on the outside, the common sign that's out there. That's the only have sign you have. That's the only the sign. The one by the road. Yes. Okay. What's the board's comments? <coughs> no. I think minus minus the graphics, it's it's really an architectural window treatment. It's it's not a sign, but. I could see this becoming a slippery slope if you start yeah. putting, you know, obscene artwork in your... Mm, next, when the first adult entertainment club opens up in town, they're going to have problems. Mm. Right. Well, Mark, this is about the time I give my usual speech. Part of it, Phil DeWire used to give it. Halmy's, Wilco's, Zares, Kmart, all have very, the biggest signs in town. Stivers. They're no longer in business. Mm. His good work is going to be the, the important advertising. Yeah. Signs are not that critical. So, but on the other hand, some direction, directional signage. Now that everybody knows he's great, how are they going to find out where he is? Uh, I, I guess you know if it's how how many. It's, uh, it's, yeah. 
how many uh, window logos you were, we, how um, many? Yeah, so the, there are total six windows. I don't know if you have the second page no, on there. No, you had it on the phone. Uh, yeah. it's, it's nice, but you might want to see something like this walking down, you know, uh, Third, Ave Third Avenue in, in 41st Fire Street, Avenue. New York. Uh, Who could it, make this it's New York? A, it's, it's very urban. It's very urban. Well, I'm the theme sure of the office is urban, and I would like to invite you actually just to take a tour of the office. It's it's not yeah. something that you're going to see, and sometimes we want to think outside yeah. the box a little bit. So I, yeah. I still want to think about, you know, what legally it is allowed. If it's not allowed, it's not allowed. I'll figure something else to do. You, but you, you, you're really, as far as legal goes, you kind of have gray area. I know. And that's why I thought to come to the meeting rather than just putting it out there. We're trying to, you know, work with you and yeah. not be too much So, you. sorry, this is... Uh, what what getting, would be the reason to say no? Science. That it is, that it is a sign. So there's... Uh, Two signs. Basically which five I and a half. I mean, as far as the sign go, this is a uh, ballpark at six, six times one. This is 72, not quite 72 square feet, and not quite 72 square feet. Okay. And that is the image. <coughs> that is the image. So, <coughs> how big is the actual, what's the box that would go around the logo, do you think? If that's 66, probably. That's a whole window, so that's uh, 40, 40 inches ballpark in here by 40, 80, 20, 40 by, yeah. I'm going to be generous, 24, so 4 by 4 by 2, 8, eight square feet, eight, eight, eight square feet. And so I know we have two over there, but I'm more than okay to just keep one. So those six windows are where your chairs are? Yes. We have 11 all together, so the staff side and the other lab side, which are the other windows. I mean, this is expensive. I can't afford to put all 11 windows, so just the operatory side is what I'm trying to do. The other will just be like office blinds, white color office blinds, so keeping it simple. I think it's attractive. I, I'm not disagreeing. It's not ugly. No, no. no and uh, and you know, I'd rather see this. These in a are just. Sign. Uh, I'd rather see this in a mobile no, sign. Okay. There, there is some uh, <laughs> sensibility to this, and there's some. Uh, okay. Uh, people are going to be curious about it. It's, this, it's these well pictures, done. honestly, I, I took it just for me to like send it real quick to him. Yeah. But if I'm like doing this, I'm going to spend some time. The editing, colors, sure. and everything is. I like black and white to be honest. I don't even like too much color, so everything in the so, office a picture. So this is your creation. Yeah. It might be covered by the First Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> as long as he doesn't put any logo on, he can put. Yeah, no, it. I, I the sign people come up with ideas faster than the bylaw can change. <laughs> Um, so um, when he put the sign, that's what I asked him the question: Is that hey, I see a sign, and I'm pretty sure we have to go through the signing commission for it. So I think that's the time when he emailed it to you. Yeah, and and I I, I agree. You know, it could constitute a sign. Yeah. If it were all a uh, all a logo. Yeah. Um, that would definitely be a oh, sign. Yeah. But I think with what what did you say? Forty by twenty inches. Forty by roughly twenty four. I'm knocking like eight eight square feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not ugly, you're right, but it's kind of a track. Uh, what's the address? No. Um, one Mill Valley Road, unit B as in dog. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not opposed to it, but I just wonder if you're open enough for all I'm not going to close the site. It's just open enough for all of yeah, you put, you know, at, then we get into that gray line. Well, that was voluptuous art. Yeah. Well, we think that's yeah. inappropriate with kids. You know. Right. Well, he's got a point. It's, it, there's some sensuality to this. It's not neutral. I could solve the picture. I that know. I know. But that's part of what makes it attractive: the sensuality. Do we? The question is: Do well, we have any say over that? And I don't. Yeah. I don't know that we do. Yeah. But it might be something for future bylaws. Would you go to dental school? And, like, 
I mean, the office we focus on cosmetic dentistry. Yeah. So what you're looking is not that aspect. No. You're showcasing sure. the cosmetic part of doing so things. So my dentist is this So where are you going with? I'm just not going to give the dental students free. Say it, sorry. Lingo is giving the medical students that in way you free tuition, uh, but I, not the dental I, school. I think I heard a pretty big catch on that. It was just what it made the news. There was there was a lot of caveats to it, which which I don't think that actually anyone. Well, it's tuition only. Yeah, and there was like something you had to do, and there there were caveats to yeah. it. I'm pretty sure it was not just a freebie, yeah. like how the media portrayed it to be. But yeah. no, unfortunately, nothing for the dental students. So. Okay, so I, I'll make a motion to approve uh, window decals with a logo not to exceed 40 inches by 20 inches each on the first and sixth panels only. Okay. So basically what you've shown us. Second. Motion and second. Do we want to say which panels or just say on two panels? Because then we've locked him in on where he can, and that, that'll affect his artwork. He's presented it as right. the first and sixth, okay. so I'm trying to okay. tie it back into what, okay. what you gave yeah. us. Okay. We can always come back if you want to. Do the third and fourth or something, right? Yeah. Yep. But probably the first and sixth makes sense. Yeah, I'd probably keep it just the way it is. Uh, quick question. Anything in terms of changing the color of the picture, do I need to go through the process? Uh, if that's substantially what you're going to Not do, really. Do. The only thing is when he actually, when I send him, he's going to take a printout and make a mock-up on the window to see that, okay, is anyone looking as good as what we think on the okay. computer is? When you have actual, maybe when you have actual colors come back. Sure. Just the same way you did here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The out external appearance of the building is part of the site plan approval function. Yeah, so, I understand uh, that. So, um, and is this okay with the landlord? I can certainly check with you. You better. I mean, initially I asked him about it. It's like, as long as you go through the town approval, that's what matters. It's like, yeah. and it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, I honestly want to see black and white images only. I, I like black and white. So if that's the case, and if they print out the black and white and try it, uh, are you guys okay or do I still should come in? The color part, I agree that you want to make sure that it's not too why, much. Why don't you come back with the final image? Okay. I'll add that to the motion to return with the final images. I mean, these images are final. The only thing that would change is the brightness or the contrast. Okay. If it prints out, then yep. that's not good. But I'm not changing the entire image. Okay. Or the only thing that would change is just going it to black and white instead of colors because yep. it's just the color part is just not looking good. It's but still, we'd like to yeah. we'd like to sign off on what you're actually going to do. So when he does the mock-up, I should take a picture and then yep. bring it here. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I can do that. Yep. And the same thing, just come in at the, uh, you know, the first. Yeah. So we know what you're doing. So I think you can prove it to uh, okay. the concept to approve window decals, logo not to exceed 40 by 20 inches, on first and sixth panels only, to return with final images. Yeah. I would second that. Is this your initial practice, or were you practicing elsewhere? Before? I was practicing elsewhere in Amherst, yes. Okay. But for me, this is my first practice. Uh, uh, yes. Okay, we got a motion, a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. So I don't think we need to give him the the that thing. You don't think it won't hurt? It won't hurt, no. You don't think Tim would care? Yeah, well, it's already been for your site plan. He's here for site plan. He's only looking for, right. a, um, you know, but well, just wasn't make there consistent, some, like you said. Yeah. Wasn't there some discussion that uh, first responders yeah, might want to be able to see inside? <laughs> that what? That first, re first responders might want to be able to see inside. Um, <laughs> so I don't know that that's a big deal. You know, I mean, there's a lot of places in dental places they can't see inside now. Okay. Bob building make a you know staples are good. All kinds of windows, but none of they're just fake windows. They just yes. show you as an yes. image yes. and they're all blank solid walls. So yes. my building was built for dental professionals and it has uh, the windows start at five feet. 
they go five to seven or something. Um, so there is, you, you can't see out, but you can only see the sky and the trees. And it, would, would it be a HIPAA violation if people can look in and see who your patients are? No, I check with the state board. Uh, it's like this one, it's a gray area. It's, there's right. no law that disallows people from looking inside. There is, I mean, if you think about it, original way the dental offices were, there were closed rooms, right? Operatories with doors. And then it came with a whole another set of problems. And now none of the offices have closed operatories like day. So you have some kind of separation, but you still can, everyone can walk through, everyone can pass by. Yeah. And the next door patient is listening to some extent. So yeah, that sure. in itself. So yeah, in an ideal world, I want a closed operatory to preserve privacy. But then again, it comes with its own set of problems. And a lot of doctors have faced those problems. And none of the new offices have, have been quoted according to closed operatories. So, what do you do in that case? So you just have to find a balance. So that's something we find out in practice of law. The fact of representation is not privilege. The fact that you are my client, okay. I don't have to. I don't have to let you in one door and send you out another door so that <laughs> no one else can see. Uh, yeah. So yeah, there there are sort of natural limitations about circulating in public that. Yeah. Like our the CT scan unit that we put in the office, we have to go through the state uh, radiation levels, verification, all that. They came in with the inspection and uh, we asked them because we have a specific design such that it's not cornered by like four walls. It's open but it's diverted. And I asked them, do I need to put a wall in there while the contractor is like, no, you're fine. You can just leave it open, which was completely different maybe like five years before. You had to put that in a closed room. It had a certain specification. So we go by the flow. Okay. Right. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Okay. A um, couple of pieces. We got an invoice from the Daily Hampshire Gazette for the legal notice that is appearing in the Gazette for the have the auto service. Um, last week and this week, and the total is one hundred eighty-three dollars and forty cents. Did they publish it as expected? Yes. <laughs> well, they published the first one. The next one will be published tomorrow, <laughs> or Thursday. Tomorrow or Thursday, I forget which one it is. Um, motion to pay. Second. Motion approved. Uh, and all the yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, no. no. Okay, anyway, there was a meeting today in the Hadley Meeting House that Bill and I were invited to. Bill couldn't make it, and I went, and it was from 9 to 5. It had to last from 9 to about 3.30. Is that the one that Chris Okafor invited yes. us to? Yeah, it's called the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grant Program. <laughs> and what it's about is the state is gathering information across multiple towns about municipal municipal, sorry, municipal vulnerability has really got to do with environmental stuff. Um, in other words, if there's a flood, right. and Hadley is prone to flooding, you know what, what things are is what things is Hadley prone to from a natural point of view or an environmental point of view? You know, flooding, strong snowstorms. Uh, strong storms, wind. Which is, we're talking and about the weather now. We, we're talking. We're, yes, yeah. the weather is one. The other one is, th th it's, it's a, yeah, environmental stuff. Yeah. And when these things occur, what might the town be lacking? You know, is communication good? Is equipment good? Is drainage good? Is uh, things along the river <coughs> going to flooding? Are they? We have the break bylaws. Do we have this? Do we have that? Mm -hmm. And there was a a uh, meeting held a few months ago with a few people, and they came up with a few top topics: flooding, storms, uh, strong storms, and stuff like that. So we took those, and then we expanded on them to a bunch of different topics. 
we had two teams of like basically six people each. You know, um, the select board was there, David Nixon was there, uh, police, fire, high DPW, and various town boards. I was there for the planning board. Bill couldn't make it, like I said. And then you went through kind of a information system, then a checklist, and then okay, list list the items that are a concern to you. List what might be able to be done for them. This is all in anticipation of this consulting group is going to take all this information of the we narrowed it down to three top topics. We're going to look this one, Joe, and they're going to prepare a report. And this report can be submitted to the state for further funding. There was some 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 big topics. There was bike maintenance, culvert cleaning, <clears throat> flooding in the uh, floodways around the Connecticut River, flooding in areas that aren't on the Connecticut River, like you know some of the places in the Mill River, some places uh, on Fort River. Sediment control, um, trailers along the river. There's a bunch of trailers. If something happened and it was a, you know, a bad storm came up, we don't even know who most of these people are. And they could, not only that, but are they properly disposing of the wastes and a bunch of other stuff. So these were a whole bunch of topics that came up. We narrowed them down to three. And the three top topics, and the report's going to be completed, and um, request for some kind of funding to assist the town with this. And it could be anything from uh, equipment to getting grants to help clean um, the drainage swales, the uh, culverts, replace the culverts, the maintenance of the dike, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Dike maintenance, culverts and uh, ditch cleaning, and trails along the river, enforcing, finding, getting a group together on the <laughs> on the <laughs> trail. We have pretty good bylaws addressing use of the trails along the river, but one of the problems is that with all the construction going on, the building inspector doesn't even have time to do his regular inspections. A lot of them and let alone do the zoning enforcing things. And some of the, he's complained that some of the issues on enforcing the stuff on the trails on a, tr on a river is a bit confusing. And you know, I'm not gonna go there, whether it is or isn't is irrelevant, but we may be able to get, they're gonna look for, you know, get a group together, these things need to be updated, make them more clear, a checklist of whatever it might be, and this will be driven for the most part by the Board of Selectmen to the DPW, especially for the dike maintenance and for the culvert thing, because we're already doing some of that. But cleaning the culverts and replacing culverts and cleaning a lot of the ditches is, I think they got a hundred grand in the budget. That's not going to go very far. And you're talking lots and lots of money to clean that stuff. There was a book written 20 years ago or so called The Tipping Point. And it just talked about the systems in general or you know, selling clothes, all of a sudden everybody wants it. And so when you reach the tipping point, it's basically all over. And what's happened, in my, point, in my view, is that the uh, drainage system, especially the ditches, have reached, reached the tipping point. So you can't blame the problem on climate change or extreme weather. It just can't handle a rainstorm anymore. And that's my editorial. Well, there's, there's a couple of things that I talked about <coughs> this on the swale, in that it's not like we're getting more water. There's so much water in the world, there's no new water being created. Bingo. It's just, there's so much water, it just is it's coming in different intervals. The swales, and the, the culverts in particular, are old. They're designed for a storm of probably Pick a number, 60 or 70 years ago. And if they were maintained, they would could, could yeah. handle the storm of today, but they and weren't maintained. That's, a, that's the other thing. So if you're going to replace the culverts, there's a, there's a new design criteria for replacing culverts. I'm going to go into that. But the big thing is cleaning and replacing where necessary and maintenance, continual maintenance. So. How about the biggest culprit? 
is beavers. Oh, beavers, yeah. I, I mean, they, they're causing, well, I mean, two people here are... We blew out a bridge on my property for yeah. about the fifth time. Yeah, and it used to be a beautiful stream, now it's blocked up with... Yeah, and there's another the side of it down there, Brook, too. Do we still have watercress down there somewhere? It was right by what, right below Wash Garrett's house down there. I don't think it's there anymore, no. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a whole bunch of little issues that are going to contribute to this. It's, funny, it's all about getting, hopefully, to get some grant money. And I gave examples of different towns or cities that have been given grant money over the last couple of years that have been, that have been doing this process. And they've gotten anywhere from basically, a, I want to say, you know, 50, 60,000 upwards of, in some cases, um, you know, seven figures. So there's a, there's a decent amount of money that's been given out for it. Who, who do, uh, I mean, the DPW is in charge of digging the ditches, but I've heard there are two people says, I'm not going to give you permission to go on my land. In New York State, if all of a sudden there's one person in between, a ditch is no good unless it's thoroughly cleaned out from beginning to end. But if a person doesn't give you permission, they can't go there. So uh, how's that? Uh, I wonder how that's being handled. That, that's a good question, but yeah. it, on the flip side of that, if you've got that same point, if you've got the land, the, the dish cleared upstream and downstream, you're going to get better flow out of that book. That's a fact. Yeah. Okay. So, would it be better if they all gave permission? Absolutely. But if you've got, you know, here to here is clean, and here to here is clean, and it was all filled in before. Your flow is going to be improved. well. I I totally agree, but like Pogo says, sometimes the enemy is us. We've uh, catered to the beavers; they're yeah. damming everything up. The spay-toed frog and the spotted turtle. Now, if you want to dig a ditch, you have to go. Obviously, even before the cons after the conservation commission, you've got to apply for. Three hundred dollars for a permit to make sure that it's not the potential habitat for the spade toed frog. So uh, the enemy is us in a way. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and one of the things that came out of the meeting was a lot of people didn't know that about. I says, you know, there's farmers that don't want to apply for APR anymore because of the sale limit by the state. Correct. And they says, what are you talking about? And I explained it to them. And they said, how long has that limit be the been there? I says. I couldn't tell you why, but it's been quite a few years. And but I said something needs to be, that should be tied to somehow, uh, I, should, I, I don't disagree with anything you're saying, I'm just telling you what some farmers have been saying, that they're not going to apply for APR because of the limit on selling farmer to farmer. I said it's done, it's done to keep the farms affordable, but on the flip side, um, you know, it's hurting them in another hand. So. Anyway, anyway, that's what the meeting was about. It was actually a pretty good meeting. And if we cleared all of our ditches, what would that do to the communities down the Connecticut River from us? I mean, we're actually doing them a favor by flooding Hadley and not dumping it all into the... Well, par par part of the deal is the water going into the... Yeah, we, we, you would increase flow into the river, yeah. but part of that is that the water going into the ditch, in many cases, should be pretty much sediment removed before it gets into the ditch. I mean, that's not always the case when it runs through farmland as it's farmland drain. Well, the, well, the argument is that maybe we should not even repair the dikes, but let the, diver, uh, li the river overflow like it used to, and... Lake Hadley. And Another topic is I got a list, uh, yeah, it's a list, from the uh, new HR director requesting from, this goes to all the town, to, to, uh, department heads on what training have you done and when does it expire and for the most part there was a whole must have been a dozen items on here the only ones that really pertain to us was conflict of interest and, <coughs> and we received an employee handbook I believe yes. and I, don't, I didn't know the dates I think the employee conflict of interest was last year so I just did it again I, I did it again too because Jessica had sent out a notice and she told me I was uh, 
13 yeah. months earlier, 18 months earlier. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Part of that, it, Jessica has been keeping track of that. Okay. So we're supposed to, when we complete the test, send her a copy of the certificate. Right. Had. So she should have some of that. Okay. Because I wasn't sure if anybody said, I have no idea when I'm done. Well, you know, we're signing them. We don't have a staff. And, uh, yeah. We try to remember as best we can. Well, we can. Yeah, we can, but the thing is, the town clerk keeps some of those records, yeah, so I, maybe that's something that the, the two that we have, we actually probably have both of these, because the, the handbook came from her when conflict of interest is returned to them. Yeah. So, okay. We, we haven't done any anti-harassment. Right, that's why I was probably not So, we can beat each other up all we want, yeah. Well, that's different. We don't work for each other. That's right. So we have we have no employees to harass. <laughs> Except ourselves. <laughs> um, I have nothing else. So I just have a quick thing. I, I think I sent it around uh, to you uh, on MS4. Uh, first of all, I sent around some information that uh, DEP uh, EPA and other interested parties have finally settled their issues and new regulations are being promulgated. <clears throat> I had copied that to Pioneer Valley Planning Commission uh, and to all of you. Uh, I got back from Planning Commission and I just don't remember if I forwarded it to everyone that uh, some of the changes in the final rules will affect the regulations we'll be adopting, but we have been given another year to comply. <laughs> so we'll be ahead of the curve. Yeah, so we, we get the bylaw in place, we just need to adopt the regulations. And so we, we won't have regulations ready for our next meeting. Uh, they are going to have to be redrafted somewhat, yeah. but not major, but just uh, there will be some changes. I, I took a look at the DEP. I opened it up. I was going to hit print 160 pages. I said, I don't think so. <laughs> not even going to read through that much stuff. I did get to page 9. I asked Bill, I said, how do they come up with these percentages? They just decided willy nilly to change the percentages. Some pressure someplace. What changed? So, what changed? I have nothing else. Anybody else have anything? No. Nope. We have a public yeah. hearing next meeting. Uh, they have the auto service. Right. Or, uh, re, re, what's called reconditioning of the have the auto service garage. And there's also, isn't there, an all, all boards and meetings coming up? Later this month? Yeah, yes, I could be able to do that. So it's an all board. Oh, that one. That's different than the department head meeting. Yes, that's in the Hopkins Academy cafeteria. Typically, Bill and I go and anybody else who wants, and we give a short presentation on. Um, so that's an annual thing? Yeah. Future needs. What we are, what we need, what we're doing, what we expect to do, what we're trying to accomplish. I think that's the 22nd. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday, Wednesday, it's a Wednesday it's at 7. Yeah. So, it, it, sometimes it, it's been. Some of the board, some people get quite carried away and speak for a good amount of time. Others are well, they limit the time. Well, except the one year they they decided that uh, an update of the master the planning board was going to go over the update to the master plan, but they didn't tell us about it. Yeah. So we were the main course, and we didn't realize. <laughs> yeah. So we get up there and we talk with talk with me. I mean, our presentation probably lasted that day. The presentation probably lasted a couple of minutes, a little more. But the questions were went on for a bit. A bit. So, anyway. So I don't need to be at that. You, you, you'll you need you'll to report be back there in our first meeting in February how that went. Yeah. You're, you're welcome to come if you want, or you can catch it on. I have a piano lesson at 7 then. So if I don't have to miss it, if you've got us covered, yeah. I'll go hit the keys. You practice every day? Uh, don't tell my instructor I don't. If they don't live in Hadley, they have no way of doing it. Well, yes, this goes out on YouTube. so they. <laughs> They, they can track you down. My sisters took lessons from a woman named Ruth Scott. Remember Ruth Scott? Yes. Yeah. They took piano lessons from her. She was a nice lady. So.
So I've got nothing else. Oh, uh, there is a um, coming up in, I think, March. Uh, I just sent out today uh, an affordable housing trust fund training program. It's a Saturday in March. In Marlboro. In Marlboro. Yeah. So uh, not, nothing requires immediate action. This DLTA thing, is that anything? I don't think we have any proposals per se, um, but I think uh, it also went to David Nixon on behalf of the select board, and uh, uh, he may have come up with something. Um, let's see. Uh, we did, uh, I think we discussed this, or maybe just Jim and I discussed this. Uh, we uh, did get an email from PVPC that our... Um, uh, support contract had basically been exhausted as of December because uh, there was so much MS4 work that we did and they had thrown all of that onto our budget. Uh, I talked to David Nixon and he has a separate warrant article budget for MS4 compliance. So we asked PVPC to resubmit their bill, breaking out MS4 from everything else we've been doing. And MS4 will be paid for out of, out of another account. So we're, we are, will not be out of planning services. I'm going to get our budget request now. Um, I'm not going to give us any more money for salaries or any stuff, but I was thinking of asking for more money for our contract service because that's been the same for ever since we started doing this. And while that amount has not gone up, the amount of time because of that has been going less and less. So I was thinking of basically dump, jumping it to 15000 and see where it goes. Give me those Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Contract, right. yeah. I mean, certainly... We get a lot for that. We do, and it's it's a good idea, but again, you got to thank Mike just for grabbing Wakeley's uh, Affordable Housing Trust. Oh, yes. I mean, that was... Uh, that probably would have cost the town probably three to four grand. Yeah. I talked to... Um, Fred Barron's wife. Fred is one of the trustees on the housing trust there. So I mentioned it. And she said, I said, have they done anything? And she said, no, they haven't because they can't buy small enough property to give them the amount of money they have. So they're not really looking at ledger leveraging it, as we might be. <coughs> but <coughs> for the, uh, maybe not the next meeting, but for the third Tuesday in February. Right now, I don't have anything on the, on the schedule for that one. We have the uh, wait, wait, on fourth. We do it the first Tuesday in, in February with the insurance trust and then the uh, yeah. Just talk about yeah. I, I've given everybody a copy of it. Yeah. Uh, we can we come to that come to the first Tuesday in February. Ready to discuss that so that maybe we can get on the town board. We're, we're just about ready to adjourn. You are? Yeah. No. Yes. Are you on TV? Yes, yes. we are. What did, what what did, we what did you decide? Did you remember what they wanted? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, they just got... Really what they wanted was two 40-foot signs because of, they wanted one on two, two sides of the building. So we ended up giving them the, the one and it's, the way it's measured is that little splash on the beginning of it has those, those like tentacles that stick out and it makes it go a little bit over the 40. So, but if you measure the letters. So you got one 40 square foot sign that's maybe a smidge bigger. I don't think that's a big deal. Externally illuminated. No, there isn't any. No, but the, oh, no illumination? I know, I think so. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Thanks for your Thank you. Thank you.
Going to the game tomorrow? What? Going to the game tomorrow? Uh, no, I've got to be tomorrow. So. He's got to rearrange his sock straw. <laughs> <laughs> we got a motion to adjourn? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John.